o'clock. Um, this is a regular meeting of the Com Community Preservation Committee. It's being held at the Don Bean Griffin Room, Howitch Town Hall, 732 Main Street, Howitch, Mass. At 6 p.m. Thursday, September 12, 2024. Um, any comments from the guests in the room? There aren't any. Moving on, approval of the minutes. CPC minutes, August 8, 2024. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. So, moved and second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, all business. Actually, um, can I abstain from that? May I abstain from that one? Because I was sure. there. Thank you. Okay, I wanted to get the minutes out of the way. I want to have a discussion with the board about <clears throat> the grant agreements that are in process right now. Um, right now, the chair, the temporary chair of the seat of the board of selectmen and myself are in discussion with Pemrose, the Primrose Agreement. Um, it's, it's been in front of the board. I was at the previous board meeting and the previous board meeting before that. It's been in front of the Board of Selectmen. They had questions on the dates. Um, there were some things that were um, adjusted and those adjustments were on me. I made the adjustments to the contract as far as the dates were concerned because the dates were had expired and this was a new grant agreement that was coming forward so the explanations out there they understand it and for the general public and general contracts and the grant agreement essentially that's what it is there are tweaks to make within contracts just like on the bottom of a lot of the contracts that you write today there's a space called errors and omissions. Well, there are a couple of things that were tweaked. They didn't understand why it got tweaked. The explanation was put to them because the dates were wrong. It was an old contract that we used, an old grant agreement we used. It got corrected. Today, they got a clean grant agreement for Pemrose. They're going to work. It's going to be on the schedule for Monday night, and they're going to vote on that Monday night. So that'll take care of most of the grant agreements. There's one other that's still out there, and I'll let Kathy address that. Um, go ahead, why don't you? Well, the only outstanding one is the Community Development Partnership, and they just didn't get it together. So they're gonna follow up on their okay. own. So, and we're having a discussion with the trust tonight about their grant agreement. Um, the other thing I want to make public is um, at the last Board of Selectmen meeting, there was discussion with the board members that the CPC numbers that we work with every year will be trued up by an outside agency. That is going to happen. Um, I've been asked to provide some information and I've made Jan avail the sec CPC secretary available to the chair for whatever information that we can help we can provide but the good thing is action's going to be taken on it and it's going to be taken on it promptly so that's the end of that little diatribe <laughs> mm -hmm. kelly um, was there any sort of timeline of when that would be complete no my understanding is it's the top priority. So I will take the Board of Selectmen at their word mm -hmm. because that was the consensus of the board. Mm -hmm. So anybody else have any questions? All right. Moving on to the next subject. Old business. Well, we gotta, we're going to discuss the grants right now. I'm sorry. So. Um, why don't we have the trust next? Put you right on the spot. Thank you. Yes. 
because I wasn't uh, quite sure what you what you intended tonight. I I did put together of uh, where we are financially. Thought you might be interested in that. We all got it. You got that. Okay. okay. Uh, and I did. Uh, I'll start that by saying um, how much I appreciate the help of uh, uh, Megan uh, Green. She's been fantastic in getting information and answering questions that I've had. You bring up the, uh, uh, for instance, the Community Development Partnership. One of the questions I had on them is, is that we had paid them previously $60,000, and from our last report to this board, that up to uh, 90000 And I'm not aware of us using them as a trust for uh, probably a couple months longer. And, uh, and, and that uh, 30 years, uh, uh, they found an error in the record keeping several years back and so corrected a, a recording error. So that, at least I knew we weren't uh, continuing to pay them for work that they're not doing. So now where do you want to go? You want to uh, review where we are on this or uh, what do you no, want? No, we, want we can us? continue with what you just thought. Anything, any questions, comments from the board? We'll start with Mary? Nothing from me. Emily? No, nothing from me Kathy? either. John? Bob? The only thing, again, could you clarify? You were just mentioning the payment, the 60000 90000 What was the issue with that? The issue was that uh, I questioned Megan because it, uh, the last report I gave you folks, we paid uh, community development uh, partnership $60,000. Right. And this report that I got from Megan showed 90000 So okay. the obvious question is, Why? how do we spend 30000 because I'm not aware of us using them. Right. And her response to that was, they corrected an error, recording error for a couple of years back. The money had been paid and not properly uh, recorded against the, against the uh, trust. Okay, so in other words, we do, you do owe them 90000 We do owe, we owe them, we, we not only owe them, the extra. We, we paid them. It's, a, it's already yeah. been paid. It just oh, hadn't okay. been, it hadn't been uh, recorded. Uh, recorded to us. Got it. Yeah, thank you. It was just a small error. We're, we're finally starting to get all the numbers we've been asking for, and it's been really, it's been really great. So we're just excited. So but that, that was just that one example. Of, it's, yeah. it's a correction. Yeah. yeah. But I'm happy to get a correction rather than have it not yeah. be answered at all. All set, Bob. Yes, thank you. Kelly? No questions. John? Um, are you going to go through these numbers that you sent I, us? I, I, I can. I have <coughs> questions. Okay. Uh, for, uh, doing the assets part, I guess, which is you list total revenues, of, let's call it $3.3 million, and then you call out about $1.6 million from the Affordable Housing Special Purpose Stabilization Fund. So if you consider that an asset, you're actually almost $5 million of total assets. Is that, or total income, I should say, not total assets. Total income. Yeah. That isn't part of the $3.3 million on the previous line, is that correct? It's not. Where that comes from is, uh, if I can break that out a bit for you, if you wish. Sure. That is uh, uh, room, uh, the room tax revenue, you know, 25% going to that week. Uh, it's one point, a little over $1.1 million uh, from that fund. And of course, that's moved into the enterprise fund that I had hoped to transfer to the trust last May, and it didn't get on the agenda. So I'm hoping that I, I promise it'll get on, that we have a fall meeting so we can transfer that money over. There's another uh, uh, four, I've, for, I've forgotten about this. At the uh, uh, 2023 uh, annual town meeting, we had, remember we had free cash at that point, we moved into the uh, uh, general fund. Uh, part of that $400,000 went to the, uh, uh, from free cash into the stabilization fund. They, we transferred more to the stabilization fund, but that $400,000 got transferred to the trust. And that is, and then we have uh, about $12,000 in interest income that is yet to be uh, moved. Thursday, September 12, 2024. I don't know what I did with this thing. 
Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I, was going, I was going to make a side comment, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> we, we also have, uh, though under $12,000 from interest that is sitting in this fund that needs now to be transferred to the trust. And the way, you know, as you know, the way the system works, we created this fund, the money gets moved in there, it has to go back to town meeting to move out of that fund into the trust. So I'm hoping that will show up. I think I may have mentioned, uh, you probably got the same, uh, same email from uh, Kathleen, the town treasurer, when she was here. Uh, assuring us that that money, uh, even though it's been transferred, is, is still there. It has been, it has been lost in the general fund. <laughs> Did that answer your question, John? Yeah, I think I'm all set now. Thank you. But was that the money that was being referred to as it had to go back for a town meeting vote? It has to go back to town meeting vote to transfer out of that fund and back to the trust. It's a two-step process. The town, as a town meeting, we create this fund. I think it's called this Help Me Marriage Enterprise Fund. What's it? Uh, so you so you create, create that fund. Money goes in there, and then the town meeting has to then vote to move it out. So it went into a stabilization account. Stabilization, yeah. So when you move from stabilization, it's still subject to appropriation. So we still have this. The town meeting still has, has to, to take a vote, vote to, to move it over. But did Enterprise funds wouldn't always, or a revolving account wouldn't have to. Revolving accounts. Right. And you're right, Mary. I got the terms right. mixed up. I thought that happened. It did not. I because no. I begged several times to get it on the last spring town meeting to move it over, and it somehow didn't get on the agenda. The warrant, rather. But the important thing is the funds are there. They know the, it now. The it's going to happen. That, yeah, I feel pretty confident we'll eventually get the money. I. I hope that you're more than confident. I hope that it's just going to happen, publicly speaking. I feel speaking. certain. I feel certain. <laughs> All right, so does that go back to one of your questions in the past about the rooms tax? It, that that's what it, this is. Okay. That's what it is, yeah. That's what this is. Oh, yeah. so I thought if we keep pounding at it, we'll get it. So we're mm. going to get it. So We got it, yeah. Good. <clears throat> right. Anything else from any of the board members on this particular topic? I have one question. Go ahead, Mary. Just a minor follow-up on the 60 to 90 was the correction made to your accounts versus our accounts that was my understanding is that correct it was money that that the trust had paid and it didn't come so they corrected it on the trust balance sheet or did they yeah, it shows that we paid 90 but we really paid 60. okay so i think that's the only so issue. that was so that was made on on your accounts but on not our on account. our cbc right. 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 Error. Yep. okay that good was question. the question yeah good question yeah, yeah. Good question. yeah. thank you and in terms of expenditures, uh, we have uh, just recently we've upped our the amount we've spent for the fire station to uh, uh, three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. So we're about eighty percent of what the total award is. And if you drive by there, they seem to me they're going gangbusters of, of fixing those three apartments in the uh, they they seem to look great. Uh, last night we voted to uh, uh, grant John Kerry money for the uh, West uh, High School, the old West High School of uh, $600,000 to complete three affordable apartments there in the new building. And he expects that to, uh, uh, to be completed in, uh, by April. And those are great projects for us because uh, he's, he's actually building 10 apartments. Uh, three of those will be affordable, seven will be uh, market rate but because the three are part of the whole, we actually get credit for the, the, uh, the, okay. ten, the 10 apartments as, a, as affordable, which helps us beat our uh, uh, shy list, mm -hmm. which we'd like to get to that 10% for a lot of reasons. Uh, we did, uh, uh, we decided to move ahead with the rental assistance program and, and allocate $150,000 for that. And I'm, uh, I guess, uh, you know, people in town hall are very busy now. We've got the RFP went out. We've got, I think, several proposals in, but I haven't been able to catch anyone to find out more details. And so our hope is, you know, our, our strong feeling, as you know, when I talked before, that there's a great need for rental assistance. Uh, we'll find out, and if, if that's true, then we'll, we'll come back to you guys for more funding. If not, we won't. <laughs> the way that works. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, one thing that's not reflected on here when you just mentioned assets. So this is income, but in terms of assets, you do own property. That's correct. You do so, own property. So, you know, maybe I, a sheet down the road that lists, mm -hmm. you know, sort of. I think we're coming again in front of you in a month or so, and okay. we can definitely have all this will be a. Because that be will be a, a true indication. Yeah. True. Um, so I don't know. Um, I haven't been to the last few meetings, so I don't know if there's been discussions about sale of any of those properties, but. We, uh, not, not specifically. We have one property we were uh, had talked about for a while, and we'll probably bring back the uh, sort of J1, J2, J3, yeah. the mm -hmm. people, that one in particular. Yeah. That will probably come back uh, on our radar. But right now we've been, uh, we've, we've delayed that while we go through these projects, but you're right. We, that's a good point. We'll bring, bring that back. Okay. Anything else from any member of the board? We, uh, we do have one other, uh, just as a preliminary discussion. We were contacted, uh, I'd say the world, we, uh, by a fellow in town who owns property off of uh, Route 39 that may be interested in, in selling that. It'd be, uh, and uh, I got together with uh, Michael Watt from uh, Cons uh, conservation. Before you say any more, Larry, shouldn't that be executive? No, I don't. We've 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 mentioned this in our discussion. I don't think I can stop if you want. Yeah, because I'm not comfortable with okay that information up there. Let me just briefly. Let me just broadly say, uh, it's not looking at an opportunity for uh, conservation, habitat, for humanity, and us working together on a project, which, which would be a good. Uh, joint project it would be great to do okay thank you all right um the discussion uh, let's turn the discussion to um the trust and the grant agreements yeah because i'm i'm not up to date on that you know we signed that from our as you know the trust we all signed that and then the uh, i'll leave it to you because it was like when then question that they haven't there hasn't been a discussion about that that I know of, that may be internally, but not that I'm aware of. Right now, I'm dealing with the selectmen with Penrose. Um, I was unaware. But what's a Pen Penrose? Penrose is the development com company that's developing the West Road um, Old Cape Cod Five Bank project in Orleans, okay, and we yeah. contributed to that. So we oh, that's our We contributed a hundred thousand, so okay. we had a grant agreement. I wanted to clarify that since yeah. they are four, five, six Queen Anne Road. Exactly. We're going to Penn Road exactly. Too. Exactly. Yeah. Separate. This is a, this is an older project. Thank you. So last year we had a discussion with the trust on grant agreements. Some of your members were um, not pleased because they weren't part of the discussion, making up the grant agreement. So you're here, we could have, we have a discussion about that tonight. Um, I'll give you my point of view, and then the rest of the board can weigh in. Um, as I understood it, some of your board members wanted to create the document on your side. Well, that's the impression I was given at your meetings. I, I, think, I, I'm not, I think we squashed that, though. I, I think we were pretty I, satisfied with, you know, using, I know we're using the same lawyer, um, but I think I, that, that was the bigger concern yeah. that should we be, I, I should we be, it was just a question like, should we be represented? And um, I thought it was a good point that someone brought up. Um, but I think we were yeah. satisfied with. Um, yeah, that was uh, through your chairman. I think uh, Mary has a point. Hmm. Go ahead, Mayor. So if I recall correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, I thought, I thought our question last year was simply about the rescission provision, and we had agreed to remove that because we agreed that with the way the trust runs, they're a fiduciary for the money, mm -hmm. so they are, they are on the hook for managing their money uh, under the trust documents. Right. So I think we had agreed to that, and I, I didn't realize that the trust had signed an agreement, but it sounds like from... That we, Mr. Valentine has indicated we, that they we, have. We, we, so really, it's just the, it's just the board of selectmen to sign it on behalf of the town right. and us. Right. There's nothing else to be done at yeah, this point. Just, so just I can follow up with that. That's exactly right. Our our major concern was, you know, 
Yeah, we have to report back mm -hmm. the point that Mary made. Mm -hmm. The other, uh, one of our members, I think it's maybe only one, was concerned that uh, just almost from a general stand, should the trust have its own legal counsel since we're a separate That's entity? Cool. And we discussed that, and I think he felt comfortable with you, the town's lawyer. But it was just, it's a proper question. You know, we, we stand alone in many respects. Sh should we have some legal counsel from our, from, and we, we had a discussion. I think he's comfortable with the way we were. But now it's up to the, uh, but the selectmen didn't sign it, my understanding. But there was no special change for us on that. It was your basic agreement, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. It was a basic agreement with a change yeah. regarding the rescission. Rescission was the one. But now, at least now, it's out in the open. Mm -hmm. What that discussion was then, it shouldn't have to come back again. I it should be cleaned up. Yeah. It is. Um, there's going to be a question to this board later, at the meeting, whether or not we want to update the grant agreements that we have because they're dated, quote unquote. So, now that we know the feeling of your, your mm -hmm. board, yeah. questions to this board? Any questions for the well, trust? Well, so, what you're saying is that the trust signed this year's grant agreement. We, we signed it. Okay. Yeah. And so now, as Mary said, it is up to the yeah. Board of Selectmen to sign it on their behalf and our behalf. And Correct. if it's being held up, by them, if, if, yeah. then it's, there's another reason. It's not their all, end, it's not our end. Correct. Because I, I listened to that discussion, and I know at least one member was, felt it was basically just almost a general, it was inappropriate for a lot of reasons for the, why are we doing it? Why is the grand agreement even needed? And that goes back, I think, I'm not going, you don't need to. You don't have to react. No. Yeah. Thank you. There's an understanding. That's all it counts. Yeah, plus we're using the meeting as an open discussion, just like you do. We will receive the information. We'll read it, get to the meeting. We'll talk about it. And there are a couple of new members. Even though Larry's relatively new, he still puts, what, probably 20 hours a week into this, so he's not really new. Um, but you have to understand it's kind of overwhelming when you have all this information in front of you, and then you're, you know, you have to sign something in, you know, two minutes. So I think we just had an open discussion about what's best for the trust. Okay. Mary. And just as a baseline understanding, what's important for us is that they've signed it. Yep, I it's not. A, it, they're I'm, the ones that, that we should be players. worried about off yeah. the board of selectmen, right? <laughs> because you want to, you worry about the the person op, the the group opposite you, make sure that they have signed to agree. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, if they've signed it, we're go we're we're good until the board of selectmen decides to to do what they do. So, I'll contact the chair tomorrow, the temporary chair tomorrow. So. And if you uh, if you rewrite lost yeah. to me. Yeah, if you rewrite it and it has come back to us, bring it back to us. We'll work with you on it. We okay. just want to be sure. Who's their signed contract right now? With the board of selectmen. selectmen. But there hasn't been any discussion. Well, we'll send the copy I have that they have the signatures to no. somebody. No. Oh. Mary. So just to that point, as far as a document changing, to me. If we decide to update it, it's only going to be for future. Right, exactly. Right, for future applications. Right, exactly. Because yeah. the application that exists should be covered by the agreement that it that is currently out there and signed. Right. Exactly. All right. Just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Marcy. I'm sorry, Marcy. Emma. <laughs> I'm Wherever sorry. you are. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever I am. Whatever your name is. I'm looking at people's <laughs> names. <laughs> Kelly. Um, Any questions? I, Discussion. No questions. Um, for me, same deal. If it's signed, I, I'm good. Robin, no questions. John, Kathy. No, just you know, this this all goes back to you know, best practices. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what this is about. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is something that, you know, our um, sort of uh, advisory body says that we should do, and that's what we were following through well, on with these grant agreements. And I agree. You know, except for the recess you know, payback thing, all the others reporting our financial state and all that, that, how can you argue with that? Right. But this was the first year we saw that agreement. We never had it in previous years, so. And that may have been a misstep, who knows? So, by this board. Yeah. So you can hang that on the chair. But yeah, anyway. I don't care about that. I yeah, just want to move right ahead now. Okay. We got it. We got it. 
All right, anything else from the board? All right, folks. Well, yeah, I appreciate it. I think it's uh, always good to get together and just update each other what we're yeah. doing. Uh, I think we're, uh, we have really a good committee. We're actually getting things done, which. Uh, you guys have made great, great progress. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to see uh, people working. Yeah, well, some brick, <laughs> you know, some brick and mortar progress. Yeah, you know, awesome. which is yeah, we're excited. Super important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and most of all, that's what's needed. That's how you get people into housing. Yeah. yeah. So appreciate your help. We'll uh, we'll be ready for. Uh, I'll expand on this then for our annual report. You probably see most of what I'm going to present then too. Then, unless we do something fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank okay. you Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. I hate to leave. There will be no audience. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, it's on TV. So it's <laughs> okay. The next thing is, um, well, I understand that. I'm going to take this out of order right now. Um, I have a request from, let me see who, if I can get to it. It's from the Bikeways Committee, and they requested that I ask this board as a consensus whether or not they should file an application for bicycle helmets specifically for J1 students. Oh. Um, I'm really taken back by that, but and I'll give my reasons why later. Um, again, we're going to open that up to the board. Now, it's not an application. They're just asking whether or not they should submit it and how the board feels about it. We don't have to take any action, or we can have a discussion on it. It's up to the board. Leave that up to the board. Did they say how they would classify it? Is that like outdoor recreation or? My guess is no, they didn't. Okay. There was nothing, no specifics. Okay. But my guess is that would be considered recreation. Okay. Anything from the board? Mary. So my only thought is if it's even something that we could do, I guess I would want to know how they were vetting it doling them out, how they were deciding who got them. I, it, it, that would be within the application. It would It would need to be, from my perspective, right. to be able to figure out how the money's getting spent. And well, so I I'm guess still the, not sure about it, I guess. Was there a request from somebody to, like, the chair. looking This for came it? from the chair. What were, was the community saying that we need these and we don't have them? Like where, or is it just an idea? I'm just... I can't answer that okay. question. I don't know. Okay. Um, it, again, it's just they're looking for <coughs> whether like I, anybody can file an application to the mm -hmm. CPC. So they're just looking for a feeling, whatever. John? I'm not sure we should be in the business of, of um, advising people ahead of time whether or not they have an appropriate, uh, I mean, an individual perhaps on the committee could have an individual discussion and give an opinion about whether whatever a potential applicant has in mind about whether that actually fits into anything that, you know, the categories that, that we can approve. Um, I get the need. I understand it because you see those people on their bicycles with no helmets all the time. Sort of concerning. But I'm not sure it's appropriate for us to be sort of rendering an um, opinion or taking a straw vote or a straw vote. Offering vote. a consensus. Understood. All set, you? Yep. Rob. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think through how that would qualify because in one sense it's not even really recreation. They're that using their bikes for commuting right. and business. I mean, I would be going to the businesses that hire them and say, you got to supply your tenant with a, a helmet so you have them for the summer. 
I don't disagree with that opinion. <laughs> but other than that, I don't, I'm just kind of baffled why it would, how it could fit in. But then, I'm sorry, <laughs> Kelly. Um, uh, I have similar opinions to Bob and John. I was thinking similarly of that. I, um, that it's probably a matter of the businesses maybe uh, supplying them. Um, Cause it's not guaranteed to like if if we were to uh, make this investment in our community, it's not really a guarantee that it would return and be able to support people year after year, and that's my initial impression without an application before us. Um, but I I agree with John is uh, you know without those details in front of us, it's hard to make a discussion because there's a lot of questions and and I do feel like our our information packet um, and uh, looking at previous um, applications and what's been awarded is enough information for someone to be able to decently vet whether it's an appropriate project or not. So that's my opinion. Anybody else from the board? Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, I certainly think that um, any committee or commission out there can ask us for information and uh, we can refer them to the documentation that's out there or we can make a phone call on their behalf to uh, the coalition and see if, if a simple question can be answered about whether helmets and other safety things can be funded through a uh, community preservation act funds i mean i don't think there's a problem with us uh, making some inquiries um, um I, I i think that they're a public safety group and they're acting in the best you know case scenario here with public safety and trying to provide something so i mean that's where they're coming from so i just think that if they um you know, are looking for additional information before they fill out a whole application that I think that's, I think it's okay to do. Okay, so you, now it comes into the application process. On the other side of that, this is for a small specific group. If this was town-wide as a recreational project for people in the town of Howitch, across the board, mm -hmm. I'd have no issue with it. But because it is a specific group, and it's a small specific group, it doesn't incorporate enough of the town, in my opinion. But then again, there's the application. Kelly. Well, that touches in with the point of like, there's there's a question on the application of how this is benefit the town of Harwich. So, um, so I'd be curious on Yes, there is the request about a specific group, and I, it makes me wonder if there may be additional support for the town elsewhere in there if they were to su submit an application. Um, but to uh, Kathy's point, I'm, I'm kind of curious of um, if, if we were to make an inquiry with the Community Preservation Coalition, why couldn't this group make that inquiry directly? Why do we have they to have be a middle ability. person? Maybe they don't know that they can do that. I'm just saying, okay. you know. I mean, that's. I think it's just part of our job. Okay. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything from any of the other members? So I'll contact the chair and have him contact you. That's okay. That's fine. <laughs> I'd be happy to make okay. the inquiry for them. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Um, Again, the CPC financials, we'll go over one more time. Um, I don't, it's gonna be, I've, I've been assured that it's gonna happen. I've also been assured that as soon as possible, as they can get the agency in here to do this specific work, we'll have our numbers. So, um, and if the numbers are fine, if they equal out what we all think they may be, no big deal. But I want to be assured that we have what we need going forward. So, any questions on that? Kathy. 
So <clears throat> given how things are moving and potential for a, 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 town, a fall town, town meeting, blah, 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 I mean, is it most likely that uh, we won't see the results of a truing up, so to speak, until maybe January or something? So my point being, if that's the case, if, if we're giving it the long view here, then uh, we're going to have to go into our deliberations the same as we have the last two years using very conservative estimates. Is that safe to say? <laughs> no, I'm not saying you want to say it. I'm just saying, is it safe to say that? <laughs> Look, we've been fighting this battle for two years now, and I don't want to say anything that's going to jeopardize getting that information as soon as possible. Okay. So that's how I'll answer that question. Anything else from the board on that particular issue? Hearing none, moving on. Um, next thing is the update of the social media. So, so what was that look for? I thought you were looking at me. <laughs> no. Um, so social media update. I, I, so what I did, and again, this is my last meeting, so another move is um, whether it's today or another time, but asking uh, to transfer this to someone else. Um, but uh, what I did kind of following the request of last month was in my, um, to kind of sum up the limited time I've had to work on this and also um, uh, kind of figure out where, how do we um, uh, share posts, but also what, uh, maybe should that content be? I kind of took a little look at that um, on what the interactions have been with the uh, posts that have contained a community preservation project um, or promotions or meeting promotions information in the last few years. Um, and, and so I'll just share, uh, so like most, most posts shared, um, and it's shared on uh, Brook Street Library, um, Harwich Old Timers Group, Harwich Cape Cod Group, and the Chamber of Commerce uh, shares too. Um, and I realized looking at my spreadsheet, I totally skipped looking at Chamber of Commerce interactions, so apologies there. But looking at the other three, um, I noticed that there's, there's not a lot of interactions for one, but the ones that do typically get interactions are um, more about like the tangible projects. So uh, like um, Brooks Free Library, the scaffolding coming down and kind of some progress in that regard got uh, kind of a lot of, a bit more fanfare and likes, if you will, um, on the post and even some um, celebratory comments. Uh, another one was one around the library with the Roger statues and it was kind of like a goofier post um, and so that got some kind of fun interactions too. Um, and so so those were the ones where I saw more uh, actual um, connection. Uh, I'm not sure how much of that relates to community preservation fund attention, um, but it doesn't hurt. So the, the, if we do more posts around, um, for whatever the future of our social media use is, um, more posts around projects and um, like ones that are kicking off or wrapping up or, or however, um, that may draw more attention than, um, uh, like I'm, I'm not really get, getting much of anything around like trying to reel in projects uh, as an example, um, but still good to put that information out there. Uh, so just sharing that finding. Um, I also saw that uh, posts done by individuals, so on these groups, that those would typically get more interaction. So in the off chance that there was someone saying there's a 
a CPC meeting coming up and uh, around like the public meeting in June um, and someone, an, an individual versus Brooks Free Library sharing it, uh, that seemed to get a little more interaction at times too. So message there is we can do what we can, but it may not be about what we can share. It doesn't mean that it's not worth sharing. So um, that's my report, if that's helpful. Okay, questions? Actually, I have one question. I, I assume you're just looking at the interactions, but you don't have access to like the back end to say like, okay, like from a reach perspective, this one got, and I know that we're not promoting any of them. It's all organic, but like, yeah. okay, this reached a thousand people or this reached 200 people. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, I don't have the back end because we're doing it by just sharing a post with the library and asking if they can post it on their page and then share it elsewhere. So um, uh, whoever, tackle social media next, that may be a good ask for the library and Chamber of Commerce if they have the staffing capacity to look into those as well, um, or if there's an additional step that can be taken as a volunteer. All said, Mary. Just a question, I'm assuming that, that the page or account holders can either provide that information or give us access to that information on those yes, posts, right? Yes, they have to look in their yeah. login. I'm just curious if you would ask anybody, yeah. like, it, you know, it's probably is, not huge. Again, you're not promoting it. You're not putting money behind it. Um, so it's just, you know, organic reach mm -hmm. fluctuates depending on the day or whatever else is happening. So, right. um, yeah. And, and just again, curious. I'm not... I'm not search. faulting you for not asking. Oh, it's, no, not no. Good. it's not a huge difference maker. I think the engagement that you're looking at is way more important. Like what is, from a content perspective, what's resonating, but I was just curious on the, the reach piece. Yeah. And I'm happy to help with social moving forward. If you wanna, I know you're out, but if you wanna have a quick e meeting, yeah, you let's- and connect that. Yeah, and, absolutely, yeah, that'd be great. great. Um, and that's a great question because that's, I'm not a social media guru, so I didn't even know that that was a question to ask, so. Okay. Thank you, yeah, I can help. I, I don't have a ton of bandwidth, but I think what you've done has been amazing, and I can kind of continue the, the content channels. And you're you're right. I think you're, you know, kind of uh, project spotlights, doing more of that. And I think the education on the meetings and how to apply and why to apply, and you know, is something that we should continue, but do that um, strategically. Great. Thank you, Emily. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from Kathy? Yeah, so would you say that um, our foray into social media has been um, positive, productive, worthwhile, or not? I, um, I mean, it's hard to get a read on that. It's definitely not negative, and it, it doesn't hurt to circulate this because you never know um, who it does touch and who that does benefit um, to get to see that and there were some on here that were like um like the the projects and such that were really uh celebratory with the amount of interaction so i feel like um uh it's not like you can put as much effort into it as you want to it's good to share um so it seems okay so do you think that projects that are recent or current projects um resonate more than past projects or I mean like because we have plenty of data and old information about old projects you know like you know when it was funded what we funded what the purpose was and then you know we could take current pictures or something like that so I was just curious as to whether we should go in a particular direction I, um, I'd be interested to hear what Emily thinks too, but my, my impression is that a, a mix is helpful. So like things that people can see today, especially if we have that banner outside um, and it's actually like clearly active work being done, um, that can really draw attention and like anyone can drive by and see that. Um, but then it's also a helpful reminder uh, with those that are complete and people can still drive by and see and interact with those. Um, it's good to tie those in as well. 
um, if I can pass it on to Emily. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I think recency is really important, but I think we, we who are closer to things get sick of it before anybody else does. You could be like, oh, that's old news. Well, it's not, you know, like frequency and saliency is so important. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you can use all the content you have, all the projects and bring them forward and spotlight them. But you know, it, there's something powerful to saying like, okay, this is happening now, go take a look at it. Anybody else have a, John? So what I'm missing is what the sort of primary approach is here. That is, is this, is all the social media presence that you've been doing through other online presences like books? Mm -hmm. It's not anybody's personal account. It's not an account that is in any way uh, part of CPC, right? You're just asking Brooks Free Library to post something. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, in, I believe, late 2022, we had a discussion among this board around that um, and had come to the conclusion, I believe, from some uh, other advice that um, uh, for one, managing our own account is a bit more cumbersome. It's a little better to kind of utilize the audience of another group since they already have a reach. Um, uh, but also, uh, I, I think that there was, if I recall correctly, a, a comment that if we were to have a town page, then that counts as like, you know, public comment and like public record in a way. But if it gets circulated from the library or some other entity, um, like the chamber too, then um, then that doesn't tie us up as much, I believe was my understanding at the time. But that, that all got discussed uh, late 2022 and settled on to go this route. And there was the active offer from the chamber and the library to circulate anything that we shared and work with them. That makes a lot of sense to me. It's a lot of work to build an audience and keep it engaged, like use an, an already existing active audience and supplement. There might be, I'm not, <laughs> I, there might be opportunity to like expand that if you say we are going to do X amount of posts, like here, maybe there's a couple other places we could put things, but it doesn't, I don't think it makes any sense to have dedicated channels and it's probably not a great idea for what you said. So, my only reservation about that assessment is whether or not, I mean, I get the business about managing like, like a Facebook account and viewing that as something that you need to be driving content all the time into. On the other hand, if you have a more static presence on Facebook where a lot of people live their lives there, which, um, which is a place that people can go potentially. And I'm not a social media person either. I don't, I mean, I have a Facebook account. I rarely use it. But isn't it also potentially sort of a static resource where you have links to active resources just saying, if you want to know how to apply, you know, submit an application, go here. If you want to understand what the requirements for an application are, go here. And there's a logo there and some other things that will register with people, that people who spend a lot of time on Facebook and they, they link to this group, they become familiar with. That's, that's my question. Um, so, so in any post that I've uh, put together, I, in, I, I link back to the website every single time. Um, so, so that can help to address that. Uh, but the, the thing with social media, and Emily, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, it, it still goes to like, uh, so if Brooks Tree Library has a pretty regular audience, um, them posting something may be more likely to pop up into someone's 
kind of news feed in a way versus if we only had like 10 people that may follow the CPC page if there was one. Um, so it's, there's pros and cons. Like I, I do agree that it's great to have a one-stop shop resource, um, but if every CPC real, CPA related post links back to our website, then that's still a resource in a way too. I completely agree with you, but there is something to having a destination that is more of like the, the marketing kind of flashiness that has some of that interesting content that you can drive people to. And, you know, the, the website, which you're doing a great job with right now, is, is more business oriented and like information oriented. It's like, how do we take some of that and kind of maybe repackage it? in a way that's um, lighter and we could drive people to to get them inspired. Um, so I hear what you're, I absolutely hear what you're, you're saying. It's like a destination where it's like, oh, this is, this is something interesting. I want to learn more, dig in. I didn't know this. I didn't know that. Um, but maybe there could be something built off the website or, or similar that could fulfill that need. All set. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody else? Mary, I'm sorry. So that's okay. You. I will say I was one of the ones that had the concern with us having our own social media accounts because they become, because we are a town committee, they become public records. We have to make sure that they are preserved in accordance with the, with the municipal retention schedule and we would have to worry about all of that. Town accounts, they are presumably dealing with that themselves. I, I was concerned with us adding that burden onto onto an additional account. So that's kind of where I was coming from with it. And I, I don't know that it's, I don't know that you couldn't still find the CPC through a Google search versus a, a search on Facebook. I think you're gonna end up at the same, at the same destination ultimately. So that was where my concern came from having the separate accounts. And I personally like the idea of sharing it with a you know, there are, what, three Harwich Facebook pages. There's an I Love Harwich. There's a Harwich Cape Cod. There's Harwich Old Timers, which, to your two points, already have their own set of subscribers that are actively following them. So if they get a random post from CBC, mm. that reach is probably going to be a heck of a lot more than we're going to create on our own uh, with meetings and, and things in the next, you know, six months to a year. So... Are you trying to say we're boring? I will. I would admit CBC would not be the first meeting that I would that I would log into channel eight or eighteen or whatever we are these days to watch. Jeez! I don't need to see myself on camera again. Thank you. Fair enough. Anybody else? Okay, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Okay, we're coming up on. Application, website, online application. Mr. Ketchum. You're up. Okay, so far, I only know of two people, two potential applications. Presumably there are more in the works. Um, I think I sent an email, which I think you all saw, that just talking about the issue about saving a draft. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said in the email, anyone who is a town employee and therefore has, has email credentials in town uh, can simply contact their Eaton to get set up to activate their ability to save drafts uh, um, in an application process. And I, I don't know, I've never Try to figure it out, but I suspect more than half of our applications are prepared by town At employees. At least two thirds, easily. Yeah. So, and there is a way for someone in the general public who does not have town credentials to also do the same thing, um, which is to click on the drafts when they get to the to the starter page of the application. There's a panel on the left and there's an item called draft and you can click on that and get into a dialogue for setting up an account 
and part of that will eventually lead to you also being able to save traps once you have an account set up. Um, hopefully that's sufficiently clear. Uh, the question I guess for us <coughs> is what, if anything, we should do right now to make this more publicly known? I mean, one possibility it would be I mean, I, I don't know whether, I, I understand that Jan generally communicates with previous applicants, and that email I wrote could be sent to previous applicants, possibly. Um, That's a good idea. Um, this should be integrated into, into the instructions that are online. Did you read the email? Uh, yeah, I can, I can do that. I think that, that would probably be Says, how do you want me to present it? Use your words. You could just. Are there steps that the. There are steps there. And, I mean, um, I don't want to be contacting Sarah. You know what I mean? I think she'd hate us. Well, Maybe. Um, her instructions were, I mean. She wants they, them to contact her. Well, they have to to get, if, the town employees have to anyway. She will get, automatically get an email from the second process for the general public. But I'm not sure if people will need help along the way with that. So um, I would say they can, uh, they will need to contact Sarah probably. But I can be the buffer. People can call me or send me an email. I can give them my email address. And if it's something simple, I can save Sarah the problem. And if, and if I can't resolve it, we can move on to Sarah. I don't, it's not gonna be a ton of people no, anyway. No, it's not. Well, it's just the, the popping heads of the town. Well, yeah, oh. and I think those- 30 something of them. No, 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 no. <laughs> those people won't, they just need to call Sarah. I mean, and that's unavoidable to get uh, just to get activated to have that work for them. And anyone in the general public who's preparing an application sees the need to save a draft, um, they can contact me if they have trouble with the instructions that I wrote in that email. Um, and if I can't straighten it out for them, we'll get in touch with Sarah. That's fine. So what I'll do is hold on for one wrote. hold on for one second. For a novice, when you say commit to save, that's in reference to being able to reopen the document and edit it. Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you. Yes. Having they a draft. Have a Very good, Dave. So they can make an application and take it to their boards. Right. They print off a draft, save a draft because they're in process. But also, once they have a complete draft. They have to get approval from, we hope they bring it to relevant committees. That's the point, and it's easier if they can just print off a draft. Well, let me reiterate this because that's come up a couple of times. We don't require them to go and get approval from another committee to submit an application. But it's a request. Yeah, okay. So That's all. Yeah, I want to sure. make the distinction. Sure. We have always had it as a request, not a requirement. Uh, Robert. One exception is historic commission for all right. historic projects. Right. Right. That yes, is a sir. requirement. Yes, sir. <laughs> Stand corrected. Okay. Jim. So what I'll do is I'll use your email, create a draft of what I'll send to them. I'll send, it to, I'll send it to you tomorrow so I can send it out to them tomorrow. That's fine. If tomorrow works for you. Tomorrow's or, okay for Or me. Saturday. But I'll, I'll, I'll go Tomorrow's ahead and fine. create it and then have you say yay or nay or correct it, whatever you wish. Okay. All right? All right. And then we'll throw a link in and then they can go right to the page. Right. The applications. Sounds good. All right. Thank you both. Johnny, you all set. Any questions from the board? Just 
I was, re Go ahead, I was reading the um, minutes from last time, and I had sent Sarah a request for credentials to the site. Is there a I bug her? <laughs> Should I not? Is it? I don't know if you've discussed it with her. I haven't recently, but I can renew the request. Okay. Thank you. I'm happy to, but I don't know if it may help if somebody <coughs> else does on I my behalf. I'll talk to Sarah. I'm, I'll probably call Sarah tomorrow morning before I um, review what Jan sends anyway, just to make sure we have that all straight. Thank you. Kathy. Yeah, quick uh, thing on the applications, John. Um, we, we got a couple applications last year that were not signed, you know, at the, by the, where was the last, person that signs project manager or person who's responsible for the project or on the last page whatever the last page is right. so my question is is if you get any applications in sooner than um, the date of what is it October 2nd this year the, what's the final when, date when October 1st October 1st okay so if you get any in prior to October 1st mm -hmm. that are not signed can you send them back to the people and say there's no signature? Or is that is a signature something that they don't do until the next one, the the follow-up, the 24-hour follow-up? Well, the, the application is a little different this year, which there's okay. more of a sort of virtual signature at the end for okay. one thing. Um, and but they're also Last year and this year, we're requesting that they sign the hard copy that they right. that they submit the following by the end of the following day. But I will keep your comment in mind when I see applications. And yeah, I, I just think you know we're so used to getting incomplete, somehow incomplete applications and. We don't do anything about it sometimes. So I, I'd like us to start to, you know, push back a little bit and say, you know, who's the responsible person? <laughs> right. And get signatures like we're supposed to. Okay, so this October first is on Tuesday. Right. Just to so everybody's aware. We had the hiccup last year. Where it was the second. Because the second was a Monday last right. year. So, okay. anything else from any of the board members? Might be a silly question, but do they <coughs> typically come in late, kind of like at the end of the hour? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's they what all. I would, I, so I that mean, would, that's what I would think. By 4 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay. Are we all set? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, that takes care of that. I took care of other. Any agenda points for next meeting? Just that meeting date is? 10th, October. Double check. Now. Oh, Bob is going to say. I have a question. Oh, it is the 10th. Under other business, I did submit a report for the oh. historic. And I sent it to the lady tonight, didn't I? Mm -hmm. yes, yes, I did. So you got the floor. OK. Um, yeah, we um, since my last uh, report last spring, uh, we've done considerably more work on determining, you know, how the uh, historic commission, I should say Massachusetts, is going to accept the forms. We ran into a problem in that the original word documents do not exist, and typically what you do on the form Bs that we've talked about is the one where you have the architecture review and the historical data that we're trying to fill in the form B's have to be in a word format and they're lost. We've attempted and the town worked really hard on this. Our, uh, our IP sta um, you know, staff um, worked on it and uh, they could not get the documents to be properly in word format that would be acceptable. So um, the work to do, to do it has considered more than what we had planned before. So the um, person uh, who won the award or who won the contract has worked out a new um, uh, 
a new uh, formula for how to calculate it. Basically, the cost has gone up to $325 per pro property, which means we can do 96 properties. Uh, that is less than what we originally planned. We planned to do the last meeting. We planned to do all of Howard Center and Howard Port. Now we have to do mostly Howard Port and then um, mix in some Howard Center ones that hadn't been done. Uh, but the, um, I think we're at a point the, um, uh, the state has accepted the samples that we sent, so at least we're in good shape at this point, but it is less than what we had originally planned under the grant. Okay, questions from the board? Mary? I was just gonna follow up on, on Bob's comments. I mean, he has done a ridiculous amount of work to get us to this stage and unfortunately he's been thwarted at every single effort you know the the pictures many of them are going to have to have new pictures taken all of the other work that we have cannot get converted back into word document which seems absurd but it is in the way that that the archives wants the pictures submitted right. they have to be new pictures because if those that we do have, if we have them, will not be saved in that format. So it has been, um, Bob has had not one iota of, of good luck with, hmm. with trying to work forward with this project. And it is, um, it's disheartening that, it, that, it's, that he's put in so much time and effort and we're finally getting to a stage where we can get something done. And um, hopefully, I think she also made a recommendation that there may be some that we had targeted that might not be as important as others. Well, that's right. So I think she's going to, yeah, going to also help to focus on the better ones, the, right. the more important ones, um, so that if there are ones that are not necessarily as, as important, that um, we can try and pare them down that way as well. So. Okay. Yeah, so was this a 2020 funded project? Yes. I think okay. that was the year. It was the COVID year. So um, are the expectations that what can be done will be done in the next year? Oh, like absolutely. Absolutely. She's already worked on quite a few of them. So, yeah, she, she plans to have that done, you know, by probably the end of the year, although I didn't get a recent update. And And... Although some of this is for record keeping and inventory record keeping. It's really to update the MACRIS records, which are the historic records at the archives. Okay. So how does this, um, how does this thwart your efforts in doing what you do need to do on the historical well, It, it doesn't thwart it. It just means <laughs> we can do less with the money that we received. The CPC. No, no, no. I, I guess what I'm saying is the importance of this work. Mm -hmm. Okay, how does this play into what you do on a monthly? So those mattress records and the the records that are in the state system, what they used to accept is significantly less than what they now require. So the the information that people are seeking out on these houses that are on our list is incomplete and some of it is virtually non-existent for the for the architectural records and the and the other records that that we would look at when looking at a at a um, historic house or a historic building so those records um, and those entries from my perspective and Bob correct me if you think I'm wrong from my perspective those are important for everyone looking at at that building and what and why it should be preserved and what its history was and how it relates to the to the history in Harwich. And it's it is to capture, particularly on the history, to capture it while you can, because right. what's happening is these old houses, people forget what they're for and there's no documentation. So you want to capture as much on significant properties, whether it's architecturally significant or uh, historically significant, you want to capture that as soon as you can. Uh, to have it and you know this did get started by the um, Cape Cod Commission on the historical uh, side querying says you know you're you just don't have enough documentation on on Harwich 
and it turned out we did, it just wasn't in the database. And so they've encouraged us to get it into the database as much as possible as practical, you know, but we don't have endless money, so we can't do everything. We just got to highlight the significant ones. So have you reprioritized given yes. how less work is going to be able to be done? Yeah, that's exactly, you know, we, we were trying to do the whole town, then we narrowed it down to Howardsport and Howard Center because that's where some of the most significant properties are. And uh, now we just narrow it down a little bit more to eliminate those ones that even the, our consultant says, yeah, that probably doesn't really need to be captured. Uh, there won't be a lot of questions in the future about the history of that house or whatever. Okay. All set. Anybody else from the board? Okay. Thank you, Bob. Sure. All right. Um, under other. I'm debating. Oh, this board has a right to know. Um, I should, I should have put this under um, CPC financials. <clears throat> when I was at the meeting Monday, this past Monday night, the board of selectmen meeting, um, the C2 was submitted to DOR. And that captures all the, well, Mary can probably give you a better idea of what it captures. And the CP2. Yeah. So it has been submitted. And I pointed out that there was a couple of errors on it. And the temporary town accountant looked at the document and said, yeah, they were missing. The information was not there. So... That's another reason why, when people ask why we want things screwed up, um, that, again, errors and omissions, things get lost, things get separated out. So um, I just wanted the board to know that. And now that it has been submitted to the state, if I'm correct, we have to follow that going forward until next year when they resubmit it they can make corrections but they can't make corrections to it at this time so whether or not i'm correct well uh, others have any more information than that so i'm not putting anybody on the spot <laughs> well no the cp1 cp2 those all get filed annually right so I'm sure it was probably done as part of a tax recap, but it was probably last year's tax recap, which will be doing rate setting again, hopefully sooner than it was done last year. Um, and then I'm, I would presume there'd be a whole new set of forms, so. Okay, John. Please explain what CP1 and CP2 are. <laughs> They're forms that the town has to submit to the Department of Revenue that relate to the community preservation funds. They're, they're, they're part of the tax rate forms that, that each town has to send in every year. You can probably look at look and see them on the, on the DOR data bank website. Um, you can search by community and it will show you some of the documents. Um, but there are, those are the filings. In the C3, the FICE chair filled in last year. If I'm not correct. Oh, every summer. It's due by September something. I do it in July. Yeah, CP3 board. CP3. And, and, and that does what? CP2. <laughs> that um, that uh, lists our projects that were approved this year um, at town meeting um, and it goes into the coalition database under the town of Harwich and it lists the project. Uh, the project funding category, the amount, brief description, and address if possible, and it goes into the database. And then we also update other projects, whether they're completed, whether they were canceled, whether there was a rescission, we change the amounts. So it's just, it's just a running database. So 
addresses all outstanding projects, including yes. the new ones for this year. Yes. Okay, any questions from any of the board members? All right, so now we're at, is there anything anybody wants on the next agenda? Robert. Um, is there anything um, that we should be commenting on the recent um, up, uh, thing at the pickleball courts that made the news um, uh, about different groups competing to use it? Is that anything we need to look at or is that just settled by the Recreation Commission? That's being handled by Recreation. Okay. So, and, and Eric, the department. Right. Okay. So, anything else? Anything anybody wants on the agenda? Okay, the date again is? 10th, and we have the update status reports from open CPC projects. Okay. So, there's a couple things I'd like to say. And the first is to Kelly Barber. Thank you very much for your time and the effort you put in. I appreciate that. Um, farewell on your journeys. <laughs> I'll try not to be a stranger. Okay. You're welcome to come in and sit in at any time. Oh, well. <laughs> because you have nothing better to do on your second Tuesday, second Thursday of the month. What was that earlier um, comment it, about it's, the CDC? It's been a pleasure, and thank you so much for the opportunity to, to serve and be a part of this group. So. Thank you. Okay, um, next thing to two of the board members. Um, this has been an extraordinary week, and I'd like to thank the vice chair for her patience with me because a couple of times I kind of lost it. <laughs> Good job, and Kathy. <laughs> I'd like to thank the secretary because I spent more time talking to her this week than I think in the past five years. Good job, Jan. So, thank you for your no. time. <laughs> <laughs> Go with the flow. Program. We're working on deep breathing exercises. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. Um, I'm open for a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.